Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Jeans. I'm going to introduce you to something a little bit fun this Christmas, something that'll help you probably enjoy your experience a little better. It's a rare event, a celestial phenomenon that's gonna be in the night sky. So you're gonna get a chance to see something really interesting this Christmas to help make it a little more hmm, different. All right, so not that things aren't different enough right now. <laughs> Let me share my screen and we'll get started on this. A Christmas star. I have an agenda. I'm going to first tell you a little bit about Earth and Space Sciences that are being taught at University at Ambrose in Calgary. Then I'm going to tell you about the conjunction itself, locating the Christmas star, what kind of message it sends for Christians and anybody, and the additional resources that are available to you so you can get more information. Let's get started. I teach Earth and Space Science at Ambrose University. Earth and space science is a way for my students to get in touch with the world around us, starting with geology. In geology, we look at rocks and materials and take field trips around southern Alberta and go to the Royal Terrell Museum, having a look at fossils and interesting things like that. For physical geography, we get to see the atmosphere and plants and biota and how everything interacts on the planet. So that connects that aspect together. And I also teach astronomy. The Introduction to Astronomy course here, you can see some of my students and I, we also take field trips, in this case, to the Rothney Astrophysical Observatory. And I do hold events and public outreach as well to help connect astronomy to those people who want more information on the, the heavens. Now, let's talk about the Great Conjunction. That's why you're here. So, what is the Great Conjunction? Planet Jupiter, a Jovian planet, a very large planet, is interacting right now with planet Saturn. These two are really close to each other in the night sky. Now this does happen, it has happened before. So we have historical events of these occurrences and it goes back as far as 1226. But you don't always get to see these events. Often there are cloudy skies, um, you know, overcast, days in which it doesn't happen, or it's too close to the sun, or something like that. In this case, they are close to the sun, but not to worry, we get a good view for about an hour early evening. What do I mean by that? Well, here's a picture that I got off of the Astronomy Picture of the Day website. That's a good one for you to go to if you want to see some interesting information as well. You'll see up here, this is the November cluster for the stars. I'm moving my mouse around that. Uh, these two are not stars, and although they look like stars in the night sky to us, they are actually planets. The ancients called them planetes. They were wanderers, these strange stars that didn't stay, stay put in the celestial sphere. They tend to move around along with everything. So we've got a smaller one here. This is Saturn, planet Saturn, and a larger one. That one is planet Jupiter. And in, on November 1st, they were roughly in this position in the sky. Now, as the month moved along into December, you'll notice that Saturn and Jupiter tend to be catching up with each other in the sky. The distance is being minimized between the two of them. And this is very significant because as it gets to December 21st, on the 21st, the two will be so close that with the naked eye, just going out and observing without any equipment, you don't need a telescope, don't need binoculars, just going out and looking, you can actually see both of them close together, so close they look like one big bright star. Hence the name, the Christmas star. As it is the end of December, it is coming up close to uh, Christmas celebration. After that, the two will separate again in the sky and they're gonna start to move away from each other. But that's what we're looking for. Okay, what will you see? Well, like I said, it's gonna look like one big bright star, but if you have a pair of binoculars, it's going to look so much more impressive. Or a telescope, wow, you'd be lucky if you could use a telescope, but you don't need those. But if you were to look through a pair of binoculars, here's what you would see. This is planet Jupiter. Nice big planet. You'll see some stripes on the sides of the planet. These stripes that you're gonna see on the planet are actually, in fact, the clouds that go around Jupiter at a fairly good speed, I might point out. But we call this belt zone circulation. So you're going to see a number of different cloud belts 
that go right around the belly of Jupiter. If, if your telescope or your binoculars are held steady and they're not shaking a lot or the wind isn't blowing them around. Now Jupiter's got some buddies with it. It has a few moons that go around Jupiter, the same as we have a big moon that goes around us. And believe it or not, these moons are the size almost, you know, around the same size as our moon, the moon. But these moons, the Jovian moons, Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede, these ones are all going around the planet Jupiter and they appear smaller in the sky because in fact, Jupiter is so big. It's a large gas giant, a Jovian. So here we can see little Io, that is the closer, smaller one of them. And it's in this picture will be in this position. Uh, Callisto up here, Europa down there, Ganymede there. Now I'm recording this on the 20th, so the night before, and I went out and had a good look and it was really interesting because all of the moons were separated in the sky enough that I could see all four of these Galilean moons. So named, by the way, because these were the first objects that Galileo himself saw through his homemade telescope when he first looked at Jupiter. Anyway, so Jupiter the planet, four moons that go around it. Over here, a very short distance, only a few arc uh, uh, minutes in space, which is a very tiny distance on the sky. See, we measure it in angles. So this very tiny angle away, you'll find planet Saturn. Saturn has a few moons of its own, like Titan, which is fairly large. Might be more difficult to see, unlike the uh, uh, Galilean moons that go around Jupiter. But have a look anyway. Depending on the strength of your telescope, the vibration from the wind, you might get a good look or you might not. Now the other issue that can happen with telescopes is it might not be fairly clear simply because these things are low in the sky. They're not gonna be high up. You're gonna be looking really close to the horizon because it's chasing the sun around the sky. So because they're so low in the sky, you're looking through a really deep amount of dust and dirt and material that's in the atmosphere. So as a result, the planets themselves might look a little fuzzy, might be harder to get a better look at it. Um, the haziness that comes from having to look through all that atmosphere and all the material that's floating in that atmosphere tends to make it a little tougher to see. But if you catch it early in the evening, like I did tonight, you should have a really good time with it. Okay. Here's what it looks like in the night sky. Nice view there. This is uh, Saturn and there's Jupiter and this is taken, taken from Italy. Here's another picture. This was taken from Guatemala. There they are right there. There's Saturn, there's Jupiter, very close together. This was one night ago, so the conjunction is almost there. The two of them are almost touching, gonna to be a nice big bright Christmas star. As you can see, it comes from all over the world. So no matter where you are, no matter what part of Canada, United States, or anywhere else in the world, you're gonna have a really nice view and have a really good time looking at this. I've got a little model to show you. It's a computer simulation that comes from an online program. Now, what you're seeing here in the middle, this is the sun. We have Earth over here. There's Jupiter and Saturn. Now, this is our solar system. Let me just give you a little tour. There's our solar system. You can see that everything's a little enlarged for scale, just to make it easy for you to view. But from Earth, we're looking just past the sun. Here's the sun. At Jupiter and Saturn, there's Jupiter and Saturn lining up with each other in the distance. Can you see that? Jupiter and Saturn just lining up beyond us. So here's Earth, and we're getting this view as the sun sets over the horizon. So you're standing on this edge over here of Earth. You're seeing not the sun, but the dark of the sky start, and there's Jupiter and Saturn in our view. Now, as I said, these do move. I can accelerate time, and you can see what happens as everything moves and Jupiter and Saturn are no longer aligned. And of course, that's a little exaggerated from what we normally would see in the night sky, but you get the idea. Okay, so back to our PowerPoint. How do you locate this object in the night sky? Well, first off, you're gonna go up early in the evening. So it's gotta be at sunset. So about when the sun is setting and over on the right-hand side of this image, that's where the sun is setting in the west. On the left-hand side of this edge of the image is about south. 
roughly. So in the southwest, about 10 degrees up, no more than that, a very short angle up in the sky, just above the treetops, you're going to be looking for a very bright, unusually bright star. And that'll be the Christmas star of 2020. So here's Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter and Saturn, two little dots in the sky. And as it starts to get dark, this will appear when the sky becomes dark enough that the contrast allows you to see these two planets show up, this double planet then you're going to have a good view of it. Now, interestingly enough, as it gets dark, I'm going to flip the screen a little bit to uh, the left-hand side, and you'll see what we've got also in the sky is the moon, which makes a nice viewing object too, because, hey, we're at a quarter of a moon. So right at the terminus, you can see beautiful craters, and you can look at how, how the moon looks if you've got binoculars again, or a telescope. And Mars, way up in the sky here in the middle, these are over towards the southeast. So towards the southwest, you're going to get a good view of a Christmas star. And then if you take a little time, you can have a good look at the moon and Mars later in the evening. But don't waste your time on them until you've had a look at Jupiter and Saturn, because Jupiter and Saturn will be fading in the sky. What happens is these two are going to start sinking down like the sun and fade off into the west. So you want to catch them within an hour of sunset. So somewhere between five o'clock and six o'clock is the best time to start hunting. By about 6.30, 7 o'clock, it's all over. And that's it for about 20 years. So if you don't catch it now, it's going to be a while. Do you have to wait in order to catch it again? All right. So after that, then you catch Mars and the moon. Now, what does this starry messenger suggest to us? Well, for those who aren't aware, those who are, the Magi were a few people who would find this object in the sky, and this object in the sky sent a message to them. Now, they took this message, and they decided to find what was its implication, which in, in their day, for them, was the new king being born, Jesus Christ. So the Magi followed this Thing in the sky, this celestial phenomenon, all the way over to Bethlehem in order to find the baby Jesus. Along the way, they met up with a few people and said, hey, you know, here's what we're looking for. And uh, this, this is how the story unfolds. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole time on the story. I'm more interested in the science tonight. But trust me, I study both because I find it an interesting thing to do. Astronomers generally do like enjoying these these kind of investigations. I'll tell you why. There's something called forensic astronomy, uh, no different than a scientific investigation or sleuthing around to find out what happened in the past. So astronomers will do something like wind back the clock of time, as I showed you before in a software program, wind back the stars in the sky, figure out what was happening to the stars at a certain period in time, and then we can look to see what was it these magi would have been looking for. So these people were not necessarily astronomers because they hadn't been invented yet. That is to say, science had a, a while to grow before Newton and a few other people came along and, and put some principles in place to help the science along. But they were educated stargazers. So these educated stargazers were obviously watching the night sky, and there's many things they could have seen. Now, over the years, many people have tried to figure that out. So there's a lot of paintings, there's a lot of uh, discussion going on about what could have been in the night sky. In this image, for instance, you can see Halley's Comet is being depicted as the object in the night sky that might have been the Christmas star. It could have been a conjunction. It could have been not two, like we're seeing right now, Jupiter and Saturn, but it could have been up to three objects in the night sky that came together as a conjunction that would be extremely rare. And such a thing would definitely lend itself to discussing, well, maybe we should follow that. That seems to be an interesting message that's being put for us in the sky. Irregardless, it's something that happened a long time ago in Bethlehem. And it's something that we as astronomers enjoy investigating, and you should too. So think about that, that this event is something rare and special. And for us, it may tell us that there's something new coming, something promising, 
something good for the new year. And I hope for all of us that it is something good that we can look forward to. So remember, keep your mask on if you're out around other people and you're investigating the night sky. Always keep a social distance. Be kind to everybody else. But hey, share this information. If you can go out and look yourself, all the better. If you can't go out and look for yourself, have a relative or friend go out, take a picture. I've got some friends who've already taken pictures from me. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> all right, so one last thing, let's talk about some resources for you. Some of the additional resources are found at the library. For instance, at Ambrose Library, we have a variety of books that you can investigate, and these are available in interlibrary loan from almost anywhere. A uh, few of them are really good, like Trexler talks about the journey of the Magi, and there's lots of good information in that. And there's a few that are compilations of many different works from different authors. So something you should investigate. Also, I've placed a PowerPoint for you on the Canadian Science and Christian Affiliation website. So please look for a, a, a PDF file from me that gives the same information I've just shown in this video in a little more detail. It's something you can print out and take outside with you to have a better look. And hopefully in the future, we will have a similar presentation, only in a little more depth about the star of Bethlehem, which we often have at Ambrose University. The last few years in particular, we've had it on a regular basis. And I'll bring some of my friends along with telescopes and we'll show you the night sky. Members of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada are always help, ha happy to help out with events like this. So thank you for joining me on A Christmas Star. I hope you did learn something informative that will help you find the star, know why it's important to us, and a little bit, you know, of technical details that will help you enjoy just the experience of the night sky. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, and a Merry Christmas.